Moving on to problems involving more than one dimension, we can no longer completely capture all the directional information simply with a plus sign or a negative sign. The number line is simply not good enough to represent a 2D phenomenon. Fortunately, for most of the problems that we'll deal with, the problems can be broken down into two perpendicular axes that can be treated separately. And here I'll show you how we can break a vector down into its quote unquote orthogonal, meaning nine degrees component to do the math separately before putting it all back together again. This kind of decomposition and recomposition will be very useful, not only for velocity and displacement vector we're dealing with right now, but also for forces and eventually to electric field. So it'll be useful throughout the whole course. So it's good to master these fundamentals early on. Focusing on the question here, in this case, we have two displacement vectors because you start out at the spot and then you walk this way and then you walk the other way. And we want to know how far you are from your beginning. You can clearly see it's a 2D problem because you have north, south, east, west here. And so to represent this symbolically in terms of our more usual notation, we'll use vector signs on top. So basically we're adding these two displacement vectors to get our overall final resultant vector. We can of course make a nice big scale drawing of the situation and do all the measurements, but we may not always have such precision tools with us. So instead, I'll show you how to do it with a calculator. In fact, this diagram that's given to us may not even be drawn to scale, so we can't measure it directly on there. So the way to approach this is we'll break down the 2D plane into two one-dimensional kind of lines where everything happens. And then we can add them separately along each line. They've already set up the x-axis and the y-axis for us, which is very handy, and they are perpendicular to each other. And notice each of these have a zero point and also a direction where it's positive, which is what's needed to complete our coordinate system. Let's get a bigger diagram here. So then what we're doing is we're taking this vector A and we're breaking it down into something along the Y axis, which such called a Y component. So we'll denote it as subscript Y. And then another component along the X. So you can see how these two vectors here add up to give me back A again. Similarly, we will do for my B, we'll make a BX and a BY. So then you can see that my overall resultant, which is A plus B, it's equivalent to doing AY plus AX plus BX plus BY, right? In fact, we can make our lives even easier by separating the X and the Y completely. In that sense, then each of these will be one dimensional. So we can say our X is equal to AX plus BX, where our X is the X component of R. And then our Y is equal to AY plus BY all vectors, and that's this little itty bitty component there. And since each of these is 1D, we can then represent all our direction with plus or minus, and then we can just add them up like numbers. Let's do that. So the first task at hand is to find out what AX, AY, BX, BY is. So let's sketch this out again here. We have A, and we have AY, AX. And we are given that this angle is 20 degrees. Notice that we've chosen that the axis should be perpendicular so that we end up with a right angle triangle and so we can use trigonometry. In terms of this 20 degrees here, this side is the opposite, this side is the adjacent, and this side is the hypotenuse. So we can use trigonometry to relate 
AX to A, which you already know. A was 12 meters. We know that sine of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is AX. Now, critical here, just the size of AX, because we're treating these as just lengths along the triangle for now. We'll deal with the direction plus or minus in a little bit. And so solving for the size of AX, we'll get the size of A, which we know as 12 meters, times sine 20 degrees. So that's 12 meters times sine 20 degrees. When you punch in your calculator, make sure your calculator is in degree mode because we're using 20 degrees. And you should get 4.1042 meters. We'll keep a few more digits because we're going to do more calculation with them. So let's not round off too quickly. Okay, so now we have the size of A, but seeing how AX goes to the left, we've defined that to be negative. So the actual AX as a vector is negative 4.1042 meters with the direction put in. So similarly for AY, AY being adjacent, so we use cosine, and the calculator gives us this number. AY is upwards, which we have to find to be positive. So AY as a vector is simply that. So we'll do the same thing for B. B looks like that. And BX goes that way. BY goes that way. And we're told that this angle here is 40 degrees. So in terms of this angle, the y component is the opposite, whereas the x component is the adjacent. Remember to treat every single triangle separately in terms of naming what's opposite and what's adjacent because it depends on which angle they end up giving you. The x component is not always sine and the y component is not always cosine. It really depends on the specific situation. In this case, we have bx being the adjacent it's going to use the cosine. This time it's 40 degrees. Again, using the degree mode in your calculator, B where tau is 20 meters. We will get 15.3209 meters. So then BX as a vector going to the left is negative 15.3209. Then BY, very similar situation. Being the opposite, we use the sine 40, giving us 12.856 meters. When including direction downwards, it's negative 12.856 meters. So putting it all back together, we recall we can do all the x components by themselves, and that's 0.1042 meter plus negative 15.3209. Again, keeping lots of digits because this is not the final answer. And now y is similarly that. In this case, we have 11 point something plus negative 12 point something working out to be equal to that. So at this point, it's actually perfectly okay to say that your displacement is 19.4 meters to the west and 1.58 meters to the south. This would unambiguously define which, where you end up based on where you started. And notice how we didn't use negative sign, we refer back to the real world description of west and south. However, they specifically ask us about how far away and also the compass direction. So we have to put it all back together. What we have worked out is we know that our x goes that way, our y goes that way, it has a certain size, and what they want is they want the overall r and also they probably want one of these angles to help define the direction. So first off, we want to find the magnitude of such a vector that's made up of these components. So we're just going backwards, right? Instead of decomposing, we're quote unquote recomposing to get the resultant. In this case, we once again have a right angle triangle, so we can use Pythagoras. The size 
of my r square, it's equal to rx, the psi square, plus ry square, Pythagoras. So we can solve for the size of r, or the magnitude of r, and since we're concerned just the size, not that it really matters because the um, square is going to take out all the negatives anyways. 5 1 meters, and then 1.5797 meters. Unit wise, we have meter squared but square root, so we end up with meters again. Through your calculator, you get 19.489. So that's the size. So that's the first part. In terms of the direction, again, we make use of the fact that this is a right angle triangle. So we have an opposite and an adjacent, and also an hypotenuse. But hypotenuse we calculate it. So we, in case we screw up here, we don't want to be using this one. So the preference is to use tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is your size of Ry over the size of Rx. So this data that we don't know here is 10 minus 1 off. Again, we ignore the negative signs because we're just dealing with distance and lengths along the triangle. 1.5797 meters. The meters cancel out. Again, as long as you're in degree mode on your calculator, you will find this number. What does that angle mean? Well, to specify the direction, that angle means you started from the west side and then you're heading towards the south side. So that's why we specify the complete answer as so you are at now is the final answer, rounding down to fewer sig figs. south of west from the starting point. So here we've specified the magnitude and the direction of our overall displacement vector. Hopefully through this question you can see the process of taking vectors and decomposing them into their orthogonal components, doing some math with the components separately, and then putting it all back together into our final answer.